I will start with this, that my uncle had always told me and my father about what he called the monkey people, and I thought he was BSing. On the second weekend in October 1976, first day of bird hunting season, I had stopped in the morning and set four catfish lines on a river where it joined my uncle's land, which was two miles away on US Highway 82 East. This area is known as the Little Lot by local old timers. After I had finished hunting at just about dark, 7 p.m. or so, I stopped back to see if I had any catfish. This is on a winding private dirt road, at least a mile and a half from my uncle's home. I had left my gun in the truck and had only my pocket knife to cut the lines. As I worked with the lines, I heard a sound I had never heard before, very deep, very loud breathing, and then I smelt a strange smell. The smell made me feel uneasy. I was unable to see anything, but as I backed towards the truck, it moved out into a clearing, and I was able to see it from about 10 feet away. At around 6 foot tall, it looked wet, as if it had just come from the river. It also had green river scum on its left leg and side. It stopped dead, still, when it seen me, and I wasted no time getting out of there. I haven't told this too often, but this is exactly what had happened. This was in Georgia. I was 10 or maybe 11 years old. 1956 to 1957. My house was on a main highway with some homes scattered behind it, and then miles of woods. My friend and I had been at a creek in the woods behind my house, maybe three-fourths a mile from my house. It was getting dark, summer, and we were heading home. I was almost home. House was 100 yards away. Not scared, almost home. Never had heard of Bigfoot. There was a goalie to our right with a trail in the shallow end of the goalie we used as a path. I heard a loud clomping sound coming toward us on the other side of the goalie, swishing through the small pines coming down the path toward us. I thought it was a mule that had gotten out and I would try to catch it. This is how loud it sounded as it came toward us. When it came up on our side of the goalie, I saw a large, ape-man-like hairy creature jogging toward us on the path on two legs. Needless to say, my friend and I didn't stay around for an extended look, maybe two to three seconds of observation. Then, we took off. The creature was probably close to six to seven feet tall. It looked like that video, you know, the Patterson and Gimlin film, when we told our parents and playmates we were the subject of much ridicule. That is, until about a week or so later, when five or so of them were down at the creek damming it up. I wasn't with them, as I no longer played in the woods. Well, they saw the thing, and this was in the middle of the day. As they came running out of the woods, some of them crying, they were so shaken. Their parents called the sheriff, and he said it was probably just a bear. It wasn't. It was no hoax with somebody in a suit. I was down at a place we call the Clay Hills outside of a town called Hoboken. I had heard a noise that sounded like footsteps in the woods. I didn't think much of it at first, but I kept hearing it, so I looked up at it and it was looking at me. I moved the shovel I was digging with and it turned and ran back into the woods. Then a few minutes later, and I had a weird feeling something was behind me. Then I heard movement. I turned and looked and it was much more behind me and getting closer. I have lived in the swamps all of my life. I'm not scared of much, but I admit I was nervous. It watched me for a while and then walked into the swamp and disappeared. Both times was close to fruit during the fall when the plums and pears were the sweetest. The second time was one night I was coming home from my girlfriend's. I passed the cornfield on my left a little further up, there is another field that was grown up with briars so thick that a man could not go through with four pairs of pants on, but something stood up and ran through them like they weren't even there. The next day I went back looking for prints, and I found one print. It was about six inches longer than mine, and I wear a size 12. Last December in Brooks County, Georgia, in the early hours of the morning, I was driving home to Florida 
on Claytville Road. I was approaching the longest bridge between Rocky Ford Road and Route 53. I saw something that looked very tall, well, like a very tall man standing near the side of the bridge. I had my bright lights on, so I flashed my lights to warn this pedestrian at this hour that I was approaching. I then tapped the horn, but this very large figure didn't run. It appeared as I drew closer to be reaching for something beyond the bridge, perhaps leaves of the trees. I began to slow down as I approached the bridge, fearing this very big man was drunk and would stagger in front of my car. But as I approached the object, I saw this was either a giant of a man in a shaggy fur coat or a huge animal that I had never seen. It was standing on two feet and its arms were long. This I noticed as it turned its head toward the car. It dropped one arm to its side. I can't describe its face because I was scared nearly too, because as it turned its head, my lights reflected in its eye, and it glowed red instead of green or yellow as I am used to seeing from animals I had viewed at night on the road. I was scared so badly I raced home, but didn't mention this until weeks later to even my husband because I was trying to rationalize this in my mind as fatigue, night illusions, whatever I could label it. Besides, I was afraid of being told I was crazy. I am a professional that needs to remain sane in the public's eye. I would very much like to get some feedback on this, but I positively do not want my name or profile mentioned on the internet. I am willing to work with anyone that is serious about finding what this is, but I must maintain a low public profile. Because not only am I a professional, but I am a woman. But I am not a crazy woman. I know positively what I saw. I was in South Georgia at a hunting camp I had just joined that year. I was leaving the campsite and driving through the planted pines, maintained dirt roads, to go to my stand. Directly behind camp is approximately 50 acres that no one is allowed to hunt for safety purposes. There is also a small pond in this area. Driving about a quarter mile from camp, I looked to my left in the pines and noticed something black. I was approaching an intersection, so I slowed to see what would emerge from the woods. To my surprise, a black animal came out of the woods on all fours, angled 45 degrees away from me. I tried to convince myself I was just seeing a bear, or possibly a cow that had gotten loose. However, as I watched from 50 feet, I noticed the complete absence of a tail. I watched the animal on open road in broad daylight for 10 seconds. It came directly out of the woods and ran down the road and then crossed into the opposing woods and disappeared. I could see that the rear legs appeared to be longer than the front and the head was closer to the ground. Also. As it ran on all fours, the animal loped, with the slope of the back changing rather than remaining level, as if the front was bouncing. Further, the legs and rear were much too thin to be that of a bear. Though I did not see the face from the limited sight of the head, there was no clear visible ears. A bear's ears would be clearly visible. I immediately thought of Sasquatch. However, I was seeing an animal running on all fours. I have just seen the Jacob's photo and that is the best way I can describe what I saw in South Georgia. Okay, I've gave it a lot of thought and I will not give the exact location. I have lived here my whole life, close to 50 years, so most of the locals know who I am, but I will say it is in Chattooga County, Georgia, just a little north of Floyd County. I will leave for work before daylight. I live way out in the sticks, as some folks say. I hadn't been a mile or so from home when my headlights caught something. I first took to be some idiot in a monkey suit. But then, I thought, why on earth would anyone do that, out here in the middle of nowhere, before daylight? I got, I would guess, within 20 feet of it. My mind was trying to get some realistic answer. It wasn't a bear. This thing stood. I would guess seven to eight feet high. This thing stood upright just like you and me do. It stopped in the middle of the road, and I stopped to keep from hitting it. Still unsure of what it was, I got a very good look at it. What was it? I don't know. What I saw looked just like a big huge monkey walking upright just like you and me do. 
Will some people say I'm crazy? Sure they will. That's okay. I wouldn't believe it either if I hadn't been the one that had seen it. Me and my girlfriend were returning home in the early morning hours, around 3 a.m., on the date of June 28, 2009. I play lead guitar in a well-known band in the Atlanta area. For this reason, it's late when I do come home. We live in an area that is very rural with lots of farming land, and needless to say, we are surrounded by woods. On this particular night, we were less than half a mile from home. We were traveling past a pasture when I saw a figure cross the road in front of me. My girlfriend also seen it and asked me if I had saw it. I told her yes, but that was the last we spoke of it until later that day. We started describing to each other what we had seen, and the first thing I told her that it looked to me like it had reddish colored hair. Then I said to her that I didn't want her to think I was crazy, but it looked to me like it was walking on two legs not four. As I said this to her, I could see that she was shocked by what I had told her. Then I asked her what she had seen. She had seen the same thing and even told me that whatever it was had reddish eyes. We saw a creature that stood about six feet tall and moved rapidly from the left to the right side of the road. We have only lived in this house for about a month and we keep hearing what sounds like something walking in the woods behind our house. Our neighbors say that it's a deer. What we hear late at night sounds like footsteps of a person, something bipedal, and not an animal. In 1987, I was 16. My parents and I lived in a log house, which was three stories, in Waleska, on top of a mountain. My room was in the basement. It was like my own little apartment. I kept my window open during summer to catch the cool breeze at nighttime. One night, I was trying to go to sleep and heard in the distance a loud, howling, moaning, screaming sound. Really hard to describe. You would expect bears, bobcats, and your occasional warthog around those parts of the woods, but I had never heard the sound before. It made me literally sick to my stomach. I laid there in silence with my Great Dane, who was also startled by the sound. About five minutes later, I heard heavy steps outside my window. I then smelt something horrific and heard footsteps on the deck. I felt that whatever it was was looking through my window at that point. My dog was pretty much under the covers, hiding with me. Whatever it was seemed to pace back and forth in front of my window for about two or three minutes, and then it paced off. Later, I heard that same wrenching howl, moan, scream thingy. At that point, I scurried and closed my window. Needless to say, I had trouble sleeping and did not ever want to sleep with my window open. I have continuously had nightmares about Bigfoot, even to this day. I am now 33 years old. At the time that I encountered this creature, I was 13. I will write it as it happened. Me and my family lived in a rural community on the outskirts of Riverdale, Georgia. Behind our house, there was many acres of woods. At that time, that area belonged to a man named Mr. Jackson. There was a huge lake there also. It was called Jackson's Lake. Mr. Jackson was a cattle farmer. His cattle were on the other side of the lake. There were many trails in those woods, and me and my friend Daniel played in them many, many times. It was very easy to lose yourself out there all day long. My encounter happened when I walked through those woods to a trailer park that was called Chitu Manor. The trailer park still exists today, but is under a different name. I went to visit a friend, and I started to notice that it was getting late, and my father had told me that he did not want me in those woods after dark. This struck me and my mother as strange, because we would always be in the woods. My mom would even go in the woods to pick blackberries, actually. At any rate, I decided to obey my father, as I did not want to hear his mouth. I walked to the back of the trailer park, and there you have to cross a big ravine. It's like 10 to 15 feet down, and then up again. It was covered in thick vegetation and that Georgia red clay. Down in the ravine was a creek, so you would get a little scuffed up. 
After I crossed that, I went up a trail that went up by a hill by the lake and that curved around and led back to my house. After passing the lake and turning the curve, I encountered my father. He said, what are you doing out here? I said I was just coming back from Pam's house. He said, well, hurry up and get home. I left him standing there and started for home. I turned back to see what he was doing and he was walking toward the lake. I just kept walking toward my house, when on my right side I heard rustling in the foliage beside me. The foliage was mostly dense tall pine trees with all kinds of honeysuckles and blackberry bramble. That was actually the place where me and my mother would go and pick blackberries. I turned and looked and I saw this creature. This thing was massive. I could see him. He was only a few feet away from me. He stood parallel to me. I was heading north to my house. He too was faced north. I was on a heavily walked clear trail whereas he was in the shrubs. These little pine trees were taller than him. He was at least seven to eight feet tall. His arms were huge like the size of thighs. They were very long. His chest was massive as well. This was no skinny creature. I looked at him. He looked at me. And off, 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 I went running up the trail. I was so scared. When I started to run, he did too. He ran right beside me in the shrubs. I would look to my right and see him, and the thing would make a loud sound. It's like he would exhale and let out a very deep grunt or roar. I kept running, and he kept running beside me in the shrubs. This thing was completely hairy, and its face was dark, but... I could tell it was human-like, because its head was like that of a human head, but hair all over, but not on the face. When I had reached the part of the trail that forked off into an open field of tall grass, wheat-like stuff, that is where he stopped. He would not come out of the shrubbery. I looked back and seen him crouching there, staring at me as I ran, and he just was there in the shrubbery. When I made it home, I ran in the house shaking like a leaf, and my mom was making supper. I told her what had happened and what I had seen, and she went to look out the dining glass window. It was a sliding glass window, and she said she didn't see anything. She asked where my father was, and I told her, then sat down with me at the dining room table and told me that was the reason that he did not want me in those woods. She said that he had told her that he had hemmed it up in a tree one night, and that he just stood there in front of it and screamed at it, and it wouldn't come out of the tree. I never told anyone other than my mother and Daniel, and now my four boys, about that. But there was something in those woods, and me and my father weren't the only ones that knew it. One day, I was watching TV after school, and this was before any of this had happened, and my father come in and told me to come and help him. I said, why? Me and my father do not get along very well. He said because Benji, our dog, had got caught in a bear trap on the other side of the lake. So I said, what? And he said, yes. So we went and tried to free Benji, and my father had took a machete. He said he could not open the trap, so he was going to cut his foot off. So I screamed no, and I pulled the trap with all my might, and my father got Benji out. Now why had somebody set a bear trap in the woods? There are no bears in Georgia. The biggest animal besides that thing I had seen were deers and cows and the cows were on the other side of the lake. They could not come across one side because of the trees, and the other side because of a big steel fence. And other times before I had ever encountered this being, me and my family would go walking in the woods, and sometimes we would cross the steel gate over to Mr. Jackson's land and trek about a mile to a very sandy clear creek. That was the side where the cows were, on many different occasions, we would come upon a cow lying on the ground dead with its whole stomach torn out. That was very weird to me, but because I was young and didn't know much more since my parents didn't say much, I never really put two and two together until my later 20s. There was something in those woods, but it's probably long gone by now. There are houses all around that lake, and Mr. Jackson no longer lives in this house. The creek where these things happened is called Camp Creek. The lake was called Jackson's Lake. It was private to him. Although me and Daniel would always play around the woods and the lake, the name of the street was and is Lyle Drive.
the town Riverdale, Georgia. I will never forget when that creature chased me, but when I got to that opening, I knew that he didn't want to hurt me. Because I know by his massive size and that massive sound that he could have just ripped me apart had he wanted to. Needless to say, I didn't want to go to those woods much after that. You are the first people that I have ever told besides my mom and my friends and my kid. On October 7th, 2009, at about 11.30 p.m., my wife and I were returning to Florida from a trip to Northern Carolina, where we were driving south on US 441 in an unpopulated area at about 65 miles an hour. We were about halfway between Homerville and Fargo, which is slightly west of the Okefenokee Swamp. It was very dark with a very scant traffic around. We were the only car in sight. There were no other lights visible anywhere and no houses or businesses anywhere around. My wife had turned on the map light because we were getting low on gas and we needed to check the distance to the nearest probable area for gas. She was looking down at the map and didn't see it, but sure, she smelt it. Years before, we had been camping in the swamp and were aware of the wildlife diversity. I have hunting, camping, and Brazilian jungle experiences and I am not easily frightened, but this shook me up. It was an instinctive reaction, similar to when you have a surprise encounter with a poisonous snake. I saw a very dark brown, black, constant colored tall humanoid figure standing on the left shoulder of the road, quarter facing toward the road and toward the direction of our travel. The figure was standing still very vertically erect with both arms loosely down at its sides. I couldn't see any facial features or individual features of hands or feet. I estimate it to be about 7 feet tall and weigh about 200 and 300 pounds. It was lanky rather than stocky and was not crouching forward but standing very vertical. The smell coming into the car vent was very powerful and was a combination of sewer-like and a strong musky animal odor. There was an animal roadkill a few yards down the highway that was fresh, so that wouldn't account for the foul odor. We conjectured that the creature had smelt the roadkill and came out of the woods to investigate. The hair on the head was long and stringy, but the rest of the body hair seemed only two or three inches long and lay down rather than sticking out in a fuzzy fashion. The thing that struck me was that I couldn't see any facial features or varied colors around the handed areas. We thought about turning around to reinvestigate, but in the middle of the night, I frankly didn't think it was prudent. We proceeded to the next major intersection to buy gas, and I asked the station employees if anyone else had mentioned something unusual or if there were any kind of unusual wildlife sightings in the area. They answered no. That was the end of our incident. All but one of the sketches I have ever seen of a creature anything like this showed a more stocky, crouching-like ape. What I saw was a tall, lanky humanoid creature that looked almost helmeted because of the way the head hair fell straight down similar to a woman with long straight hair. I could see no neck. I don't know what I saw, but I will never stop my car at night anywhere in that area again. This is a reoccurring situation. I have seen prints that looked like giant bare feet in the dirt. It was in the winter time and I know there would be no one walking up the side of a mountain barefoot in those kinds of temperatures. I noticed I have found them along service roads and along trails by power lines. I suspect they are found there for the same reason I am there. Deer hunting. There are also three lakes and multiple creeks in the same area. I was hunting with my wife and I showed her prints and she wanted to leave real quick. I have seen an actual animal when I was in my teens, but I lived in Ohio then. People say that I'm crazy, but I know these animals are real. The closest thing that I can compare them to are giant orangutans. I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I know the woods and every animal that lives there. I know what these are and that they are real. I live in Rome, Georgia, and where I find these tracks are near to where I live, but I don't tell anyone because of fear of some yahoo would try to hunt them. It was around 11 p.m. 
December 31st, 2006. I had just got back from a nine hour drive from Florida and I was sitting on the couch with my uncle watching the end of the Bears Packers game. My son's mother called and I was talking to her when I heard a sound at the window. The only way to describe it is a hooting sound, something like a monkey. Since the lights were on in the house, I couldn't see outside. So I looked over to my uncle to see if he was messing with me. He was looking out the window and thought I made the noise. Then he jumped up and said, did you see that? I looked over to the window and saw the bush moving outside. He grabbed one of his guns and we were planning on shooting at midnight and ran outside. Once he got outside, he could see more movement at the end of the house and I heard a grunting noise near my sister's window. It sounded like it came from a big animal. It sounded something like, uh, uh. His dog, Max, heard my uncle yelling, who's there, and ran around to the front where he was. As soon as Max got there, he stopped barking and whimpered as he backed up to my uncle. The dog wouldn't get near the side of the house, though. We didn't hear or see anything for a while, so we went back inside. When we came back out at midnight, we heard some noises, but they were far off. Except for that, we didn't hear anything else that entire night. On our way home to Rock Mart, Georgia, from Birmingham, Alabama, we were following the directions the GPS gave for the distance. This brought us to Highway 120 and Vincent Mountain Road. We had just made that turn and gone a mile and a half when my husband and myself saw a large figure standing there in the tree line. There was illumination coming from the right side of the road from an additional light source other than our car headlights. This enabled us to clearly see this figure that was on the left side of the road with one arm straight down and the other arm slightly moving. I believe that arm movement is what caught our attention, making us both look to our left clearly allowing us both to view this creature. It was covered in reddish brown fur from head to toe with a face I can only describe as ape-like. It appeared to be over seven feet tall. He or she seemed to be getting ready to cross the road. After about 15 seconds had passed, he and I both screamed out, Did you just see what I saw? I have never been a believer in the legend of Bigfoot, but I know what I saw tonight, and I am floored. I have never written to any site such as this about anything in my life, and I certainly didn't think I would start at 56 years old.